Hello everyone and welcome back to another tutorial by Eclip and this time I'm gonna show you the complete baseline processing as the most requested topic from your comments. So the first thing I want to mention is the structure of the baseline note. Here we have like classic rolling baseline and this is a waveform just from the synthesis completely clear without any processing. So it sounds with a kick it just sounds simple as this. Now this stem looks pretty simple as this is the only synthesis from the VST. After we start processing it, we can divide these single notes on three parts. First will be the click, actually the transient of the bass line, which will define how clicky is the bass line or how much click it, it does have. The second part of the structure of the bass line will be the body. And the body is actually containing the low mids and low information and the third part is actually the tail actually on the tail as you can see i pulled a fade out here because on the progressive we mostly use those faded bass lines so all three notes sound separated and kind of punchy it's a little bit different technique for a full-on producers and they will probably have something like this because all three notes will be kind of glued together now uh, when we see this waveform we cannot see the difference between the first part the body and the tail but after we start processing it the difference will be much bigger so mostly the first thing i usually do is always putting a multi-band plugins to get a different color and different shape of the bass line and the most of the times i start with the multi-band distortions of different kind for this case the first plugin i used is actually quadrophase one which is not available anymore for even cubase users but i found a way to the jbridge to make it work because this plugin actually gives this kind of plasticness and fatness which i couldn't replace with any other third-party plugins that i tried so far so basically after just inserting the quadrophase one what i do as you can see all the bands are on zero just playing with the first point between first two bands is actually giving the results that I want and I will play you right now and I will move this left and right and you will understand what is actually happening. And what's also important to mention when we insert any multiband plugins, if we check without the quadrophase and if we measure the level of the baseline, we can see that the peaks are actually going to the maximum point. But after we insert this, we will see that the peaks are actually reduced and RMS actually brought up a little bit, which allows us to bring up the volume of the baseline much, much more. Now this baseline does not sound much better than before but after the whole process is completed if I turn off the quadrophase and turn it on you will see that the difference is huge and how much plasticness and fatness it actually gives to the baseline. So the next step is also just playing with the multiband plugins and this next plugin is actually multiband envelope shaper but as you can see I didn't brought any transients up or down. I just use it as a multiband to change the first band left or right and to find the good spot and that way just using multiband to change the shape of the bass line. And as you can see here as well, we also reduced just by finding a right spot on the multiband just to reduce the peaks a little bit and bring up the RMS. That way we can crank up the volume and get much louder bass line in our tracks. In the next few steps as well, I use the multibands just to shape the bass line. As you can see here, the R bass actually is acting like a multiband as well and also just finding some spots and I also use it to bring up the low end on some point that I like and for each note these frequencies will be a different this is the most important thing that for each note you need to play a little bit with those spots of the bass line and with this intensity knob actually I'm bringing the low end on this frequency a little bit And 
and as well we could see we reduce the peaks here much much more so that means that i now can bring the the fader up and bring the volume of the baseline without any peaks now those clicks that we get is actually because i didn't put the lfo i will just turn turn on the lfo to get a little bit of the side chaining so we avoid the click in this area here where tail of the kick and the first note of the bass line are actually summed together. Next plugin that you also can use is from Waves as well and it's called Vitamin Stereo and I don't know why but this maybe sounds the best and maybe this is the closest replacement for the quadrophase but in this particular case i use both of them so basically you just insert it and by a default preset you just play left and right with these settings here and find the spot that you like it Now the peaks are actually went a little bit up but there's always a spot where you can find where the peaks are going up or some spot where the peaks are going down. This is basically because we are playing with the phase of the bass line and we can see that on the oscilloscope. But my idea is not to reduce the much as possible. We reduced already a lot of peaks. Now I insert all of those plugins just to shape the bass line to sound like more plastic, more clicky and process it to get the results that we want. And also there's another plugin that's, that's possible to use. It's a C4 from Waves. It's actually multiband compressor. As you can see, I'm not compressing anything here. I just use it to find a good spot for shaping the bass line. So I will play now with all those five multiband plugins. How does the bassline sound? And comparing with this. So all these five multibands actually are shaping the bass line and I basically do not use all the time five or more of them. I just wanted to show you the most of them and i inserted here and i forgot to mention this plugin from melda production m saturator mb which is kind of replacement for a quadrophase and i know a lot of people using this one to as a first one to shape their bass lines and i will show you how does it sound So it gives the similar effect as the quadrophase one, but I prefer quadrophase one because I'm used to it. And before I continue on the next part of EQing, I want to show you one more plugin that you can use in shaping your baseline phasing with the multiband is actually Transex. I already showed you before, but let's put all together in this video. So basically Transex is transient shaper, which can be replacement for a multiband envelope shaper. And basically just inserting it, you can play around the position between two first bands. And if you can see here in this range, everything is on zero. I just left on the mids for a 2 dB, but we can turn it off for this case. And there's actually one more plugin. Actually, it's a multiband distortion that I want to show you. It's a Saturn or Saturn 2. You can choose, both of them are fine. And basically, you just need to make a band and play around and find the settings that you like. In 
Saturn you can also change the algorithms here and find what's worked the best but from my experience the tube and tape are the best for shaping the baseline and you can continue making those bends and play around with the position of them So I showed you eight multiband plugins that are amazing for shaping the bass line and it's actually Quadrafaz, multiband envelope shaper, R-Bass, Vitamin C4, MB Saturator, Saturn 2 and Transex. So after inserting all these multiband plugins we get our color which is I can say amazing here. The rest is only EQing and for that there is no magic formula, this is only your ears and your feeling about it but there is a one thing that I want to mention before I show you how did I EQ my baseline here and this is the only one band that you should reduce straight away after inserting those and basically it is in this area from 200 to 500 after all those multi bands it will just peak in this area for sure As you can see 365 I usually reduced in that area after that you are ready to go with dropping other elements of the track and later on you will do a lot of EQing on the baseline because when you start dropping more elements inside the project you will understand that you will need to get back on the baseline and do a little bit more of a EQing. I will just drop the files from the template I released last month so kick high head clap snare and so on 140 just drop inside the project and we can hear that the baseline has a lot of frequencies to be reduced and this is how I started with it it's just a lot of bands and tries until you find the best results as I said already it's a lot of practice of your ears And after I remove the Saturn that shouldn't be here, actually it sounds much better. I just inserted the Saturn because this was like pre-made baseline and I spent like months in building this processing. But I just inserted the Saturn too to show you the results of, of Saturn. But basically after I removed it, actually it sounds much better and it sounds like this. So basically after all of the processing here I just pull it up fab filter MB to reduce a little bit of the of the peaks here on the on the mids but this is optional of course some of you might like more clicks some of you might might like a little bit less click this depends of your taste and the last thing on before before side chaining i always have paj 979 and find the best possible phase spot for the whole baseline so it does fit good with the kick And also one thing after I build my baseline I remove the oscilloscope and I put a fab filter L2 and I turn on the true peaks just to have the same peaks as it had just to avoid any peaking on the baseline channel. So now after processing everything is there I will just turn off LFO tool and I will go inside and take only one note of the bass and I will extend it and I will render it in a wave so we can now compare 
the waveforms of those two. As you can see, this is the simple one and this is the processed one. And as you can see, there's a huge difference between two of them. Now I will just remove, as you can see, there's always a latency. Sometimes it happens because of the plugins. And th this is an advice for all of you Ableton users. I advise you to always bounce in Wave because Ableton has an insane problem with the latency. And now I will mute this channel. And for Cubase users, there's an amazing thing. You always can disable the track and hide it in your project. And that way you can always come back and fix whatever you think that is not good enough. And let's hear how does it sound. And this is now without the side chaining and I always do kind of different because side chaining actually is bringing our groove and building our groove. I have a different way of doing. I always try to reduce the first note around the middle here. Now it sounds good enough, but I always bring an LFO tool again and I will not go till the end. I will just do it like here. And also moving this kind of spot a little bit less, you, you can get a little bit more side chaining effect, which is sometimes really good. It depends from what you want to build in your track. But try it, move it on the left, it will not sound good. But if you move it a little bit right, you can get some kind of really nice results. It's like more, more proggy, more like ducking effect. And there is also one more thing that you can do, but this is optional as well. There's this area of the kick and the bass of the first one. So sometimes it's maybe a good thing to try. And this, if we duplicate this track and we delete this one and here we delete this one, what you can do actually is to use EQ and to find the position of first harmonic and to reduce it a little bit. So just on the first note of the bass line and that way you actually are avoiding any conflict between the tail of the kick and the first note of the bass line. As you can see you're not losing much and it's a safe way because sometimes when you try to phase your kick and the bass line it might happen that you like how does your kick sound and you might like how does your bass line sound but when you try to phase them together one of them will suffer and will not sound good enough anymore so this is one way of doing that and i have a blue cat blue cat patchwork where i have this preset here where i'm removing everything under the first one So if I solo this, so I marked this position here by LFO and I'm removing the first harmonic just from this part here, which means from the area of the kick. And another is actually the second part of the bass line where I do not have any processing at all. I'm just passing the signal to go through that area and this way I also can remove just, just the first harmonic from the first one. And this was much more than I expected to do about this topic and I hope that you like it and please subscribe and continue writing what would you like to see next. I already wrote down all ideas that you gave me already but you just continue down and I will fill up and when I get some time I will make those tutorials for you guys and I hope that you like it and enjoy. Thank you very much and see you soon. Bye. Ciao.